हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन नवकोकन एजुकेशन सोसाइटीज डी बी जे कॉलेज चिपड़ून माई सेल्फ मिस्टर अरुण जाधव फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनवीरमेंट एजुकेशन एंड वी आर बैक अगेन विद न्यू टॉपिक फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट लेसन ऑफ एनवीरमेंट एजुकेशन दैट इज रूरल एंड अर्बन डिवेलपमेंट सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रूरल एंड अर्बन एनवीरमेंटल इशूज In our previous sessions, we have already talked about population growth, demographic transition, and its four phases, population pyramids, and migration of people. And today, we are going to discuss rural and ur- urban environmental issues. So, if we compare urban areas and rural areas, then urban areas are suffering from various urban, various environmental issues. these areas are having large number of issues as compared to rural areas because the rate of development population growth rates are very high in urban areas so let us start our topic today urban and rural environmental issues first of all we are going to discuss urban environmental issues now in urban environmental issues various issues are there some are related to land and biodiversity some issues are related to human health and aesthetics of the city some issues are related to water some are related to energy air and climate and some and some issues in urban areas are related to economy we are going to discuss all the issues in detail let us start with the first point that is urban environmental issues related to land and biodiversity and the first issue related to land and biodiversity is loss of crop lands crop lands means agricultural land we all are familiar with the process of urbanization as cities grow agricultural areas around them comes down so with growing urbanization agricultural area around the cities comes down urban areas are using these farm lands or crop lands for human settlements and for industrial as well as infrastructural development this is the permanent loss of the crop land as we cannot bring this land under cultivation again as per the report of ministry of agriculture government of india india has lost 16000 square kilometer of the crop land in the period of 2001 and 10 india has lost a huge cropped land in the uh, 10 year span 16000 square kilometers in percentage india has lost 0.8% of the grossed cropped land so this is how we are losing our crop lands and in this loss urban areas have a huge share so as urbanization is growing this is how we are losing our crop lands now one more figure comes from census department it says that area under urban use had jumped by 24000 square kilometers in the same span of 2001 and 10 10 year span so urban land use is increasing or it was increased by 24000 square kilometers from 2001 to 10 so this is how we are losing our crop lands from these figures we can understand the rate by which we are losing our crop lands or agricultural lands here is the picture showing loss of agricultural land or crop land in this picture we can clearly see that how our urban areas are encroaching in crop lands now after this the next important impact this is also one more picture of showing how are we using agricultural lands for urbanization the next important impact regarding land and biodiversity is loss of forests and grasslands as we all know urban areas are using agricultural lands forest lands and grasslands for various developmental activities so agricultural lands are using forest land and crop lands grasslands everything for developmental activities and we can shri- we can see shrinking forest areas around all the cities whether big or small in india croplands have been used 
for various purposes like infrastructural or industrial development. India has lost 31% of the grasslands in just one decade from 2005 to 15. So in the time span of 10 years we have lost 31% of our grasslands. As far as forest areas are concerned, we can see encroachment of forests or encroachment in forests land in Mumbai and Pune, especially in Mumbai, the encroachment of human is very high in Sanjay Gandhi National Park. With this encroachment, we are losing our forest patches which are acting as a lungs of the city, which provide huge amount of oxygen, clean air and maintains temperature balance. And as we are moving towards such areas, as we are destroying such areas, we are destroying the sources of fresh oxygen and pure atmosphere. Here is the picture showing grassland, uh, sorry, deforestation in Mumbai. Now, the next important impact or environmental issue related to land and biodiversity is loss of wetlands. Wetlands provide numerous ecosystems, goods and services. India has 27,403 wetlands in total. Of these, 4,000 are coastal wetlands. 20 out of 27,403 wetlands, 4,000 are the coastal wetlands. And we are declining the wetlands at the rate of 2.3% each year. The rate of degradation of wetlands is 2.3% each year. The drivers for this decline are overfishing, agriculture or intensive agriculture, pollution, deforestation, climate change, land encroachment and urban development. So these are the factors that are generally responsible for loss of the wetlands. Urbanization exerts significant influence on the structures and functions of wetlands. So here is the picture of showing how are we losing our wetlands. So here are two pictures, one was taken in 2003 and another was taken in 2019. And these are the pictures of wetlands in Kashmir. In, in the picture of 2003, we can see a wetland which is not seen in another picture. So this is how we are losing our wetlands. Now the next important impact regarding land and biodiversity is loss and fragmentation of habitats. Natural habitats are very essential for living organisms because natural habitats are the places that are biodiversity rich places. Living organisms are found in abundance and in original form in natural habitats. Now as the process of development is going on in urban areas, as urbanization is rising, we are losing our forest areas, grasslands and natural habitats of living organisms. As these areas are facing the serious threat due to urbanization, so the natural habitats of wild animals are either fragmented in many pieces or getting destructed permanently. So <coughs> when natural habitats are destructed, when we cut forest areas, that is the permanent loss of that natural habitat. Development of roads, railways, power lines result in fragmentation of natural habitats which ultimately results in loss of biodiversity. So due to developmental activities, various developmental activities that are going on in urban areas, we are losing our forest areas. We are either losing our forest areas or we, or we are fragmented these ar forest areas or natural habitats in two or more pieces and we can see such a type of fragmentation in our metro cities. So, here is the picture showing how are natural habitats fragmented in two or more pieces. This is also one more picture showing how are power lines responsible, sorry, railway lines responsible for fragmentation of forests. The next important impact regarding land and biodiversity is increased wildlife road kills. One more important impact. Now, the roads which we have constructed in urban areas or in forest patches especially these roads are acting as a death traps for animals. Roadways and railways are acting as a death traps for wild animals. And according to the recent study, there were 
23 leopard kill from 2009 to 14 in road accidents in the southern state of Karnataka alone. So in a single state we have lost 23 leopards in just span of 5 years from 2009 to 14 and 2 more leopards made their ends in the train accidents. So we have lost 5 uh, sorry 25 leopards in a single state of Karnataka. So this is how we are losing our wildlife. Here is the picture showing how are we losing our wildlife. This picture clearly tells us the situation of killed killing of wild animals in road accidents. So the next impact regarding land and biodiversity is increased soil erosion. Now soil is very essential component for living organisms especially for especially for humans and soil erosion occurs in urban areas due to loss of vegetation, construction, overuse of surfaces in public recreation and gathering places. And actually these are the activities which are mainly responsible for soil erosion in urban areas. Along with these activities, impervious surfaces in cities, they prohibit filtration of water in the ground due to which the concrete areas or impervious surfaces concentrate flows of water and run off across the exposed soil. Unfortunately, soil erosion results in water pollution problem also in our cities. So impervious surfaces concentrate flows of water across the exposed soil which results in soil erosion. Urban areas witness a quick economic growth and have more construction projects than rural areas which brings more intensive changes in environment during the short period of time. So this is how we are losing our soil. Now here is the picture showing soil erosion, how our urbanization is responsible for soil erosion. One more picture we are having th that is the soil erosion due to water flows. So this is how we are losing soil. So the next impact are the next issues are the urban issues related to human health and aesthetics of the city. Now the first issue regarding human health and aesthetic of the city is contaminated drinking water, one of the very common issue in almost all the Indian cities. If we think about India, then the consistent increase in the rate of growth rate of population, Indian population has led to increase in demand for water particularly in urban areas where the growth rate is very high as compared to rural areas and therefore there is a huge gap between demand and supply of water. At present, 163 million people in India do not have access to safe drinking water and 210 million people do not have access to improved basic sanitation in India. In addition, there is a lack of waste water treatment facilities in our urban areas. The prevention of pollution of water sources is extremely critical in order to continue to supply water of good quality standards. Available data suggests that pollution levels have increased in surface water as well as ground water. And so polluted water for drinking is a serious issue in urban areas as it is going to be more dangerous in future. So this is how our uh, urban areas are suffering from the contaminated, the problem of contaminated drinking water. Here is the picture showing how are we uh, leading towards water pollution, discharge, direct discharge of polluted water either domestic or industrial sewage in our water bodies. Now the next important impact regarding human health and aesthetic is environmental pollution. Now cities comprise less than 3% of the earth surface, but there is extraordinary concentration of population, industry, energy use leading to massive pollution. So though industries comprise 3% of the earth surface, there is a huge population and there is a huge concentration of industries, energy use which leads to pollution. As urban localities are characterized by having good infrastructure and prevalence of industry, both of which are undoubtedly linked to each other. Industries and vehicles in urban areas release smoke into the air, harmful waste in water bodies and in surrounding areas, and also make lot of noise. While development is good thing as it brings in opportunities for thousands of people, it is not worth it if, if it causes uncontrollable level of pollution 
which are highly detrimental to the environment. And this is what we are seeing happening in most of our cities in India. So this is how increasing environmental pollution is one of the important issues in our cities. So here is the picture showing discharge of domestic or industrial sewage in water bodies. And here is the picture how are we throwing our garbage in the water bodies in urban areas which ultimately leads to water pollution and various other environmental problems. Now the next issue in urban areas is traffic congestion. Again one more very common issue in urban areas. Rapid urbanization, urbanization comes with several issues, traffic congestion is one of them. In India, in addition to the regular traffic, in addition to the routine urban transport, the network of rickshaws, two wheelers as well as bullock carts, hand pulled rickshaws are also contributing substantially to the congestion. Traffic congestion causes slower speed, queuing, increased trip time that increases economic cost. Traffic congestion is nothing but waste of time and health. Sudden stop and go driving pattern at our traffic signals increases fuel consumption, which leads to addition of dangerous gases in the, into the atmosphere, which causes various health issues. So this is how traffic congestion is becoming a serious environmental issues in urban areas. Here are some pictures of showing traffic congestion in Mumbai. So here is the big, a huge queue, large number of vehicles are there on a the road at a time. We are having one more picture of condi saying condition of traffic situation in Mumbai. Now after traffic congestion, the next issue related to human health and aesthetics of the city is the reduction in aesthetic value of city. Our cities are losing aesthetic values and again it is one of the common issues in, urban, in almost all the cities in India. Most of the Indian cities are losing their aesthetic values because of the hoardings, the manner in which hoardings are placed, our walls defaced with graffiti, footpaths sprayed with litter and open areas covered by waste. So these are the factors which are basically responsible for loss of aesthetical value of the city. Almost all the metro cities in India are having number of holdings. Along with holdings, walls defaced with graffiti and litter sprayed on our footpaths is also adding to the problem of pollution in cities, which ultimately results in the loss of aesthetical value of the city and it is, as said earlier, it is the common problem in almost all the Indian cities. Here are some pictures showing how are we losing aesthetical value of the city. Here are the holdings placed and one more picture we are having is the uh, walls defaced with graffiti. Now, after studying urban issues related to human health and aesthetics of the city, let us study environmental urban issues regarding water. And the first issue is increased surface runoff in our urban areas. Increased surface runoff is also an important environmental issue in our urban areas because urban areas offer new opportunities for development. But most of the cities in India suffer from urban flooding during monsoon. This eventually leads to loss of life and property and affects the economic activities and natural ecosystem. And we can see such a kind of situation in a, in a city like Mumbai. Urban areas are characterized by impervious surfaces like roads and buildings, concrete areas. And these impervious surfaces like roads, pavements and buildings, which decreases the capacity of the city to absorb water, making it solely dependent on outflow of surface water runoff. Under such a circumstances, even moderate rainfall can lead to major flooding in our cities. The changing, life pa sorry, changing land use pattern and encroachment of fresh water bodies in our urban areas in our urban areas leading to the problem of urban flooding as we have not left any space any place to percolate the water in ground because of changing land use pattern and encroachment of fresh water bodies this indicate that land is the more valued in india than the water 
due to which surface runoff increases which results in urban flooding. In every monsoon, we see such a kind of situation in Mumbai. Here are the pictures showing situation of surface runoff in our cities. Now the next important issue regarding water is increased surface and groundwater pollution. Water pollution is a serious problem in India as almost 70% of the surface water resources and growing percentage of groundwater resources are contaminated, contaminated because of biological, toxic, organic and inorganic pollutants. So we are continuously polluting, polluting our surface and groundwater resources. Urban areas produce large amount of domestic and industrial sewage. Many urban areas do not have facility to treat domestic sewage. In case of industrial sewage, again in many cities or in many industrial areas, the wastewater industrial sewage or industrial wastewater is discharged in various water bodies either untreated or partially treated. This in turn is leading to increase a burden of vector borne diseases like cholera, dysentery, jaundice and diarrhea. So this is how due to continuous pollution we are leading towards dangerous situation of environmental pollution. Here are the pictures of surface and groundwater pollution. This is the situation how are we throwing garbage in our water bodies which leads to pollution. Now one more important issue regarding water is increased flooding. In urban areas with rapid increase in impermeable surfaces like urban development means concrete areas, roads and buildings, likelihood of flooding has increased. Farmlands, vegetation cover and bare soils have been converted into built up areas. We have converted our agricultural lands, vegetation cover and bare soils into built up areas. As a result, water runs off of the concrete structures. In developing countries like India, human encroachment onto the active flood channels, poor flood management strategies, lack of flood early, early warning systems and disposal of solid waste in drainage lines are the major causes of urban flooding. And we can see such a kind of situation in Mumbai when we where uh, the garbage is thrown in drainage lines which causes blockages in the water flows which results in urban flooding. So this is the situation of urban flooding in India. Here are the pictures showing the situation of urban flooding. As uh, impermeable, impermeable surfaces are increasing in cities, the problem of increased flood, flooding is becoming severe day by day and future it is expected that it will become very dangerous. So after studying <coughs> increased flooding, now the next important issue is decreased natural sewage treatment. Now natural sewage treatment is nothing but provision of plants and microbes for reduction of pollution and this is the natural provision. Naturally grown plants and microbes reduce environmental pollution. But due to deforestation, excessive discharge of toxic substances have caused loss of such a natural vegetation and microbes which leads to water pollution. As we are losing this natural vegetation and microbes, increasing pollution is causing serious health hazards in urban areas. So this is all about the issues related to water. Now after studying these issues, let us talk about urban issues related to energy, air and climate. In issues regarding energy, air and climate, the first and very important issue in urban areas is increased energy use and waste. With development in infrastructure and industrial facilities, urban population is rising due to which energy consumption level in urban areas have increased. So our urban areas are using huge amount of energy. And when uh, there is a high need of energy, large amount of energy is generated where again natural resources are used. It means high generation of energy is leading to increased consumption of natural resources. And when natural resources are consumed in larger amount, it always leads to environmental pollution. And the increased use of resources leads to increased production of waste. More energy consumption means more pollution and more generation of 
waste so as we are using larger amount of energy it leads to more pollution and more generation of various types of wastes so this is how increased energy use and waste is becoming an important urban issues one more important problem is increased air pollution more vehicles increased energy consumption in various forms more industrialization lead to excessive emission of pollutants in our atmosphere as our cities are having large number of vehicles and industries these industries and vehicles release harmful gases in our atmosphere if we talk about urban lifestyle then urban lifestyle is also continuously adding to air pollution as per the latest urban air quality database 98% of the cities are having poor air quality in this report it has been stated that 98% of the cities in low and middle income countries do not meet who's air quality standards so this is how the situation of air pollution in our cities atmospheric quality or air quality in cities it's degrading day by day we are well familiar with the problem of air pollution in delhi so this is how urban pollution especially air pollution is increasing now the next urban issue regarding energy air and climate is increased greenhouse emissions greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane ozone nitrous oxide these green greenhouse gases are excessively emitted and human activities are are largely responsible for this emission of greenhouse gases now in greenhouse gases excessive emission of greenhouse gases cities are blamed for majority of greenhouse gas emissions so too are more affluent and highly urbanized countries if all production based if all production and consumption based emissions that results from the lifestyle and purchasing habits are included urban residents and their associated affluence likely account for more than 80% of the global greenhouse gas emissions so urban lifestyle is responsible for 80% of the global greenhouse gas emissions the international energy agency iea states that urban areas have emit emitted 71% of the greenhouse related gases urban areas are accountable for 71% of the global greenhouse gases and this number will rise to 76% by 2030 making energy related emissions the largest single source of global greenhouse gas emissions from a production based perspective so this is how increasing or excessive emission of greenhouse gases is becoming an important issue and as we all know when greenhouse gases are emitted in excessive amount it leads to global warming so the next issue is enhanced global warming global warming is nothing but excessive rise in global temperature due to excessive emission of greenhouse gases rise in global temperature due to excessive emission of greenhouse gases is nothing but uh, global warming now this global warming is leading to climate change even we have experienced hottest summers bitterly cold winters untimely rain hail storms so these are the signs that that are telling us that climate is continuously changing and the situation is likely to worsen in future if proper precautions are not taken so global warming and we all are familiar with this problem of global warming is the situation is becoming very very dangerous one more important issue in our, uh, in urban areas is ozone depletion again well known issues in urban areas ozone layer is the protective umbrella that protects us from harmful ultraviolet radiations of the sun this this ozone layer has the potential to absorb 97 to 99% of the harmful ultraviolet radiations coming from the sun that can cause damage to the humans if ozone layer was absent then millions of people would develop skin disease and weakened immunities ozone depletion is nothing but the gradual thinning of ozone layer caused due to chemical compounds containing gaseous bromine and chlorine so the chemical compounds containing gaseous chlorine and bromine are responsible for ozone depletion 
ozone depleting substances that contain chlorine includes chlorofluorocarbons carbon tetrachloride hydrochlorofluorocarbons and methyl chloroform whereas ozone depleting substances that contain bromine are halons methyl bromide and hydrobromofluorocarbons sources of chlorofluorocarbons are solvents sprays aerosols refrigerators and air conditioners cfcs were used in home home appliances like fridges refrigerators air conditioners in both buildings and cars that were manufactured prior to 1995 so cfcs were used as a coolant in appliances like fridge refri refrigerators and acs which were manufactured prior to 1995 but right now there is a ban on use of cfcs as it is leading to ozone depletion in case of halons sources are fire extinguishers halons are so potent that they are able to deplete ozone 10 times more than other ozone depleting substances this is all about ozone depletion now the after studying uh, urban environmental issues regarding energy air and climate let us talk about economic problems in urban areas economic issues are higher taxes decline in business and increased unemployment urban people have to pay higher taxes because they get various facilities and therefore in return they have to pay taxes there are number of reasons responsible for decline of business and as far as increased unemployment is concerned as the number of people from rural areas are moving towards urban areas this huge migration towards urban areas is largely responsible for increased unemployment in our urban areas and majority of the migrated people are unskilled and therefore unskilled laborers in urban areas are continuously adding to the problem of unemployment in our urban areas so here we have talked about all the urban issues now the next point is rural environmental issues in rural environmental issues the first impact or the first issue is poor sanitation well known one of the well known environmental issue in rural areas rural areas do not have access to proper and enough sanitation facilities rural areas do not have proper public health condition related to clean drinking water adequate treatment and disposal of human excreta and sewage rural people rural people due to illiteracy and poverty are unable unaware uh, unaware about the situation of sanitation and hygiene illiteracy and poverty are the two main factors that are causing various rural issues and poor sanitation is also one of them because rural people are unaware about the sanitation and hygiene due to illiteracy and poverty even in drought prone areas where water is provided with the help of tankers people cannot even afford optimum usage for sanitation and hygiene and so situation of sanitation is really becoming worse day by day in rural areas so here is the picture showing situation of sanitation now the next rural issue is conversion of farmlands into residential lands in Uh, conversion of farmlands into residential lands is not the only issue regarding urban areas in rural areas also farmlands are being converted into residential lands before few decades rural population was limited but now with growing population rural areas are now expanding and to provide shelter to growing population agriculture lands are being utilized for housing purposes in rural areas and this leads to decrease in per capita availability of cultivated land so conversion of farmland is also an important issue here now the next important issue is lack of drainage facilities now in drainage facilities rural areas do not have proper drainage facility and due to lack of drainage facility and open defecation rural areas are becoming more and more dirty and this dirtiness is causing various health issues in our rural areas here is the picture showing situation of drainage facility in our 
rural areas and the last and very important rural issue is indiscriminate use of fertilizers now in indiscriminate use of fertilizers and pesticides rural farmers are using these chemicals and fertilizers to increase agricultural yield as population is rising so to meet nutritional need of growing population agricultural large amount of agricultural production is needed and to get high agricultural yield rural farmers are using chemical fertilizers and pesticides in improper manner they do not take preventive measures during applications of these agrochemicals which results in health hazard we have seen such a kind of case in maharashtra in yavatmal district where more than 20 farmers had lost their lives as they had not taken proper precautions while spraying pesticides the excess of agrochemicals or pesticides pesticides and fertilizers accumulate in the uppermost layer of the soil and they also accumulate in water bodies and causes various health hazards and environmental issues like eutrophication eutrophication is nothing but excessive algal growth in water bodies in flowing water also these agrochemicals are posing serious threat to the aquatic animal or aquatic life so this is how indiscriminate use of pesticides and fertilizers are causing serious health issues serious environmental issues in rural areas actually one more rural environmental issues there that is sal salination desertification and degradation of land but before that here is the picture how are rural farmers using fertilizers let us discuss the last impact or the last rural issue environmental issue that is salination desertification and degradation of land over cultivation intensive agriculture and over irrigation are the primary causes of soil salination when water is overused in farm lands it leads to salination because the dissolved salts with evaporation of water dissolved salts come up in the uppermost layer of the atmosphere which which leads to soil salination and when agrochemicals are used in excessive amount this excessive usage of agricultural agrochemicals also lead to soil salination and soil salination ultimately results in soil degradation or desertification desertification is nothing but the process of conversion of fertile lands into barren lands and due to over irrigation and over use of agrochemicals we have converted a huge fertile land into barren land or unproductive land so this is how salination desertification and degradation of land is also one of the important rural environmental issues so this is all about rural environmental issues in rural environmental issues we have talked about poor sanitation conversion of farm lands into residential lands lack of drainage facilities indiscriminate use of pesticides fertilizers and the last is salination desertification and degradation of land thank you